The topic of this video is graphing an equation by plotting points. First, to graph an equation, we're talking about an equation and two variables. And to plot points for those types of equations, we need a rectangular coordinate system that is two-dimensional. And we obtain this grid by intersecting the x-axis, which is this horizontal axis, and a vertical axis, which we label the y-axis, at the origin, that is the point 0, 0 of each of the axes. To plot a point, let's say we wanted to plot a point which is of the form x, comma, y. Um, let's look at 3, negative 2. That means to start from the origin, move 3 units to the right in the x direction, and then 2 units down in the y direction, and that point is where we get 3, negative 2. Now, coordinate system is important in our everyday life. In fact, to pinpoint someone's location on the Earth, we actually need a coordinate system. We need to know the latitude and longitude. That is, how far north or south from the equator are you, and how far east or west from the prime meridian are you. And forming an ordered pair with those two coordinates gives us our location on the Earth. We won't go into that really in more detail here, but just understand that a coordinate system and graphing is very important in our everyday lives. Now, what we're going to look at are equations in two variables. And the first thing we're doing is just graphing these equations by plotting points. In later sections, you're going to use or learn families of equations and use something called transformations to get their graph. But we can always plot points by doing this. We graph the equation by plotting solutions of the equation on a coordinate system. And a solution is an ordered pair that satisfies the equation. To find solutions, we can substitute values for x and solve for y. That's the typical way, but you can also substitute values for y and solve for x. I like to form a t-chart to um, kind of organize the solutions of the equation. And in the left column, I'm going to put the x values that I'm going to substitute in. And in the second column, I'm going to put the value for y. So if our x value is negative 1, y would be negative 1 minus 3 or negative 4 which we can write as the ordered pair, negative 1, negative 4. If x is 0, y is 0 minus 3, which is negative 3, or the ordered pair, 0, negative 3. If x is 1, y is 1 minus 3, or negative 2, which is 1, negative 2. If x is 2, y is 2 minus 3, or negative 1, which is the ordered pair 2, negative 1. And lastly, if x is 3, we get y is equal to 3 minus 3, or 0, which is the ordered pair 3, comma 0. Now understand that my x values that I selected there are kind of randomly chosen. I like to typically plug in values that are negative, 0, and positive values. And now I'm going to plot the solutions that I just obtained. So I have one, negative 1, negative 4, which is to the left 1, down 4. 0, negative 3. 1, negative 2, which is right 1, down 2. 2, negative 1, right 2, down 1. And 3, 0 is right 3 and stay at the axis. And notice that these solutions actually lie in a pattern of a straight line. And if we connect those points, we actually form a picture of the solution set of that equation. And any point on the equation is a solution of that line. Now, y equals x minus 3, we actually call a linear equation in two variables, partly because its graph is a line. So let's look at some other equations. If I wanted to graph the equation y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3, I can do the same thing, plug in values for x and solve for y. So if we let x be negative 1, y is negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. 
Here I have to apply the order of operations, simplify the exponential expressions first to get 1 plus 2 minus 3, which happens to be 0. If x is 0, we get 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3, which is 0 minus 0 minus 3, or negative 3. If x is 1, we get y is equal to 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3, which is equal to 1 minus 2 minus 3, or negative 4. If x is 2, we get 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus 3, which is equal to 4 minus 4 minus 3, or negative 3. And then if x is 3, we get y is equal to 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 3, which is 9 minus 6 minus 3, or 0. So we have the ordered pair negative 1, 0, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 4, 2, negative 3, and 3, 0. So this equation we'll learn is actually a quadratic equation because of the exponent of 2, has a graph of a parabola. And if we connect these points, we're going to see that it goes down to this bottommost point of 1, negative 4, and then it turns back up. So again, that graph is a parabola because of the quadratic equation. Let's look at y is equal to absolute value of x minus 1 minus 2. Again, just let x be any values that we want. We're going to let x be negative 1, so negative 1 minus 1 and the absolute value minus 2 is the absolute value of negative 2, then minus 2. But the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, so 2 minus 2 is 0. If x is 0, we get absolute value of 0 minus 1 minus 2, which is the absolute value of negative 1 minus 2, or 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. If x is 1, we get y is equal to absolute value of 1 minus 1 minus 2, which is the absolute value of 0 minus 2, or 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. If x is 2, we get absolute value of 2 minus 1 minus 2, which is absolute value of 1 minus 2, which is 1 minus 2, or negative 1. And then if we have x to be 3, absolute value of 3 minus 1 minus 2 is absolute value of 2 minus 2, which is 2 minus 2, or 0. So notice that the solutions are negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1, and 3, 0. Notice that these points lie in a V shape, and so I can draw the graph through these points to get the complete solution set of that equation. So an absolute value equation has a V-shaped graph. Let's look at one more of these. Y is equal to negative 3 fourths X plus 2. Um, the reason I want to bring this one up is because notice that the coefficient of X is a fraction. And to make our calculations by hand easier, it would be easier to choose values for X that are divisible by that denominator of the fraction. So since we have a denominator of 4, I'm going to substitute in values for like negative 4, 0, and 4, just because I'm doing this by hand. If I was using the calculator, I could plug in any numbers and it would be fine, but I'm going to plug in negative 4 and get negative 3 fourths times negative 4 plus 2. First, remember a negative times negative is positive. Those 4s divide out, so I have a positive 3 plus 2. 
which is 5. If I substitute 0 for x, negative 3 fourths times 0, plus 2 is just 0 plus 2, or 2. And lastly, if I substitute 4 for x, negative 3 fourths times 4 plus 2 is negative 3 plus 2, or negative 1. So I have the order pairs negative 4, 5, just left 4, up 5, 0, 2, and then 4, negative 1. My points still lie in a line, and so to graph the solution set of that equation, I need to connect these three points. If you're doing this by paper or pencil, definitely want to use a ruler to get a straight line there. But again, this is a linear equation in two variables, and its graph is a line.